Okay, hi folks. It's Pastor Dave Grisham with uh, For God and Country. And um, tonight, uh, I'm having to record this. We're not doing it live. Um, but we're going to talk about tonight, the scripture fake Christians hate the most. There's one particular scripture that I have, um, I have it on the back of my pickup. And I've had bumper stickers with this on there before. And it gets, seems to get the most comments of just about any, um, any statement that I make on the back of my truck or, you know, on a bumper sticker. And the other day, it was actually about a week ago, um, someone on Facebook put up a, a post that basically said that works has nothing to do with faith. And so I posted this one scripture, this one scripture I'm talking about, the scripture that fake Christians hate the most. And basically when I posted it up, I, just, I didn't post it with any commentary. I just put up the scripture by itself, one Bible scripture. And what did I put up? Here's what I put up. James 2.26, which says this, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And what was the response of this friend of mine on Facebook who was supposed to be a Christian? Well, they immediately blocked me without any explanation, without me getting to say what I wanted to say about what I meant by that scripture or what God means by that scripture. Uh, they just basically blocked me. Now, we... In Christianity, we've run into some serious problems. Um, we've run into a lot of areas where people like to go, woo, way off in the left field with things, okay? They like to go, uh, for instance, you can't call Jesus Jesus anymore. You gotta call him one of 47 different names. And they, people argue about what the names are. You know, they, and you're just not spiritual enough if you don't call Jesus by the right name. And, um, and just all kinds of things. People go off into left field on legalism, you know, and, they, and people have gone off in the deep end when it comes to works. And works has become a dirty word in Christianity. And that is not the case according to scripture. Okay, we are not allowed to go to the left or to the right with scripture. I preached a message one time in Alaska sitting in a canoe on a lake. And the reason I did that was because if you're sitting in a canoe and you go too far to the left, you're gonna get drunk, dropped into the water. If you go too far to the right, you're gonna get overturned and go into the water. You have to stay balanced in the canoe to stay afloat. You need to stay balanced in the scriptures to stay afloat in your faith. You need to make sure that you're balanced. You can't go off to the left or to the right. You can't add to or take away from the scripture. And you cannot remove the importance of works out of the scriptures and just throw the baby out with the bathwater and say that, oh, works are no good. Works are no good. If you, if you say you gotta be doing works, then it's works-based salvation. It's works-based salvation and, and that's a dirty word. So the word works, has become a dirty word in Christianity, which it should not be, okay? Now, if you would in your Bibles, turn quickly to Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians chapter two, okay? I'm gonna bring this Bible over here where I can read it a little easier. Keep my notes right here. All right. Starting in verse one. And you he made alive who were once dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. That means you used to do it. You don't do it anymore. Okay, that's what that means. If you're a Christian, you're not supposed to be walking anymore in accordance with the works of the world, with the course of the world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. So the devil does works, doesn't he? He does works in the sons of disobedience. That's important to remember. 
among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Now he's giving you a list here of what the works that the devil does in you when you're not saved. And we're by nature children of wrath, just as the other. So if you're a child of the devil, you're a child of wrath, you're a son of disobedience, and the devil is your father, your spiritual father. And you, and G, just as Jesus told the Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil, and the works of your father you want to do. Okay, so when you were a sinner, you did works of the devil. Okay, you did works. Mind you, there's more than one kind of works, and we're going to get to that here in a minute. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So God changed all that. God sent his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he sent his son to do works, okay? God also does works. You are a Christian. You are saved by works. You're just not saved by your works. You're saved by the works of Christ because when God sent Jesus Christ to this planet to die on the cross, and when he did, when he did that, when he did his ministry, and he died on the cross. He rose from the dead. Those are the works of God, okay? So the devil does works, and God does works, okay? Got it so far? All right. For by grace you have been saved. Now, you don't want to stop there. There's a lot of people that quote this scripture, and they stop right there. For by grace you are saved. But it doesn't stop there. Through faith. See, you can't take away faith out of the element with grace. If you take faith away from grace, then it's no longer grace because the grace is only accessible through faith. You don't get saved by grace without faith, okay? You get saved by grace through faith. You gotta go through that faith to achieve the grace. If you don't have the faith, you don't get the grace, okay? So you can't leave that out. And a lot of people, when they quote this scripture, they leave that out because these are the people that they don't like talking about works, okay? They don't like it. They don't like it because when you start talking about faith, when you start talking about repentance, they start going, works, 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 and they start freaking out. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, workmanship, Christ's workmanship, Christ did works, correct? Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Oh my goodness, now there's the word works. Now he just got through saying it is the gift of God, not of works. But we are his workmanship, God did works, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Well, good heavens, what does that mean? which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Hmm. Okay. Here's what he's talking about. The devil does works and God does works. All right? And we are called to do works. Now, we once did the works of the devil because if we were children of the devil and the works of our father we wanted to do, now, if we're a child of God, should we be doing, should we want to do the works that our father did? Yes, we should. Do you see what I'm getting at? When you are a child of the devil and you were not saved, the works of your father you wanted to do. Now that you're a child of God, the works of your father you want to do. Does that make sense? It's two different paths. It's two different kinds of works. There's the works of the devil and the works of God, the works of the flesh, the works of the spirit. So if you are doing, you cannot get saved by works of the flesh, but you are saved by works of the spirit. 
God did those works in the spirit to save you. And he, cre and he saved us not only to deliver us from the consequences of sin, but to deliver us from sin itself and make have us do good works. That's what it says right here. So it says, you gotta, meet, you gotta keep this in balance here, right? It is the gift of God, not of works, for we are his workmanship, so God did works, created in Christ Jesus for good works, hmm. which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So as we are saved, we're children of God, the works of our Father, we should want to do. Okay, now, Let's turn over to Romans chapter four for just a moment here. We're gonna start in verse two. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. So what's he talking about there? Okay, he's saying that Abraham is not justified by works. Now we're gonna put this in context here in a minute, okay? So let's go back to James chapter two. James chapter two, we're gonna go back to James chapter two. And we're not gonna to go to verse 26. We're gonna go, um, we're gonna go through verses 14 through 26, okay? Starting in verse 14, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone he has faith but does not have works? Okay, so now we're looking at faith with works, okay? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warm and filled. If you just give lip service, you just say it but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? In other words, if you give lip service to good works, okay, what does it profit? Your brother who's in need. The same thing with God. If you give lip service to good works with God, but you don't actually do them, what profit is it to the kingdom of God, okay? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Now, when Jewish people want to emphasize something, they repeat it. So basically, verse 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also, is a repetition of what he just said here in this verse. If it does not have works, is dead. Well, if your faith is dead, do you get the grace? No. No. You don't. If your faith is dead, you don't get the grace. But some will, someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Now in Acts 26, 20, it says, repent, turn to God and do works befitting repentance. Works befitting repentance. It's, it's saying basically, live a holy life in demonstration and in sincerity showing that you have indeed repented. Your works would be sufficient to demonstrate that you have indeed repented, okay? You believe there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. So just believing in God's existence is not enough to save you. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? So now he's repeating it a second time. So by the time you get to verse 26, that's the third time he's repeated it, three times. Faith without works is dead. If you don't do good works, if you don't obey God and do what God tells you to do, your faith means nothing. It's dead. It, it, you're not doing anything for God. There's no evidence that you have faith. Okay, I'm gonna to explain to you in a minute just the process that, 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 that works plays and what it exactly in what stair-step process uh, works actually plays in all of this, okay? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Ooh, now wait a second. We just read over here in 4.2 
Abraham, our father, has found a court. It says, for if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about. But then over here, it says, was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered Isaac? Hmm. So that seems to be a contradiction, but it's not. If you see scriptures in the Bible that appear to be a contradiction, it's not a contradiction in the word. It's a contradiction in your own understanding. Now, let's put this in context. So we'll understand. Go back to go back to Romans chapter four, but let's go to verse one so we can put verse two in its proper context. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? That's the key, the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, so there is a works of the flesh that we are not justified by and works of the spirit that we are justified by. We are justified by the works of the spirit, okay? When he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar. See, that was the that is the fruit of obedience. That See, it says over here that as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, but when he believed, he obeyed. He was obedient. That belief led to obedience. And that obedience led to works of the Spirit. And says, so we off, when he offered his son Isaac on the altar, do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by, by works, faith was made perfect. And I'm going to explain that process to you here in just a minute. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So he repeated that from um, Romans chapter four, verse, verse two or three over here. So he believed God. And when he believed God, he acted like he believed God. It changed his behavior. True belief will change your behavior. It changes what you do. If I believed there was millions of dollars in gold buried in my backyard, I'd be out there with a shovel digging up my yard. Because if I truly believed it, I would do something about it. If you truly believe what God says, you'll do what God says. Okay? Abraham believed God. It was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see, then a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. He's saying there that if you don't have the spirit in you, you're dead. I mean, it, 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 there's no life in you. And your faith is dead without works because the works is the spirit of your faith, okay? If you truly believe, you will obey. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna works-based salvation. I'm not ta I'm talking about salvation-based works. That's what I'm talking about. We don't do works of the flesh to get saved. An unsaved person cannot save themselves, no matter what good they do. No matter how, no matter if they walk a hundred old ladies across the street, no matter if they give charitable donations to every worthwhile charity in the world, if they don't go through Christ, they don't get their sins forgiven. The only way you go to heaven is to get your sins forgiven by Jesus Christ, and that work was done by Christ alone on the cross. You don't get forgiveness by your good works. You get forgiveness by God's good works, by Christ's work on the cross. That's how you get forgiven of your sins. And you cannot be a child of God unless you are first forgiven of your lawlessness. You must be forgiven of your sins and be born again. <clears throat> because you cannot achieve that in the flesh. So works-based salvation only applies until you get saved. After that, when you do when you do works and you do works in the spirit, you are justified by those works because that's what we just read in James. You have to understand there is works of the flesh. They're attributed to the devil and the devil does works and he's, do, he's working in the sons of disobedience. And so he is doing works. 
And Jesus told the Pharisees that you are of your father, the devil, and the works of your father you want to do. Okay, so if you're saved, then the works of your heavenly father, you're going to want to do because you've changed allegiances. You're now, you're no longer a sinner. You're a saint and you're completely different. You're changed. You become a new creature, a new creation. And this new creature is having his mind renewed and is thinking of different things and doing different things and going in a different direction. It's a complete change. Okay. All right. So. We showed you in scripture how the works of the flesh you are not justified by, but the works of the spirit you are. Because if you don't do works in the spirit, you don't have faith because true faith produces obedience. Okay, so there's a works of the flesh versus the works of the spirit. All right, let's talk about this process of how this works. The Bible says that when you get saved, every man is given a measure of faith. So you have a measure of faith, okay? By that measure of faith, you choose by your free will to have a measure of belief. So when we can have different levels of belief, we know that because a man brought his son before Jesus and said, you know, um, Lord, heal him. And he says, do you believe that I can do this? And he says, I believe, Lord, uh, help me with my unbelief. So he was saying, I believe, but not as much as I should. So we know there are different levels of belief. So you have a level of faith, and by that you choose to, I'm sorry, yeah, you have a level of faith, by that you choose to have a level of belief. And that level of belief leads to a level of obedience. Obedience. And that level of obedience leads to a level of works, good works in the spirit. Then what happens? Well, it said in the book of James that your faith, your, your works perfect your faith. So what it does is when, you're, when, you, com when you complete that cycle and you go from, from faith to belief to obedience to works, then it strengthens your faith and goes back. And so your faith gets stronger, which then brings up your obedience or sorry, your belief, your belief becomes stronger and then your obedience becomes stronger, and then your works become stronger, and then it goes again and does the same thing again, and it's a spiral upward. This is the process of sanctification, which a lot of Christians don't talk about these days, and a lot of pastors don't teach about. This is the process of sanctification. It goes faith, belief, obedience, works. Faith, belief, obedience works and it's strength each one strengthens the other until the works strengthen your faith and it starts all over again and it's a spiral upward okay that's the process by how this works okay now if you Jesus is concerned about our works if you'll notice in the seven letters to the churches in uh, the book of Revelation the First thing Jesus says out of his mouth, he says, I know your works. He says that to every single church. I know your works. God is expecting you to do works for the kingdom of God. God didn't just save you so you can sit around in church waiting in the rap for the rapture in your little foxhole, letting the battle Go on over your head while you're just hunkered down. Come on, get me, Lord. I'm saved. I'm ready to go. He has saved you from your sins for a reason. For a reason. And it's not just to go to heaven. It is to reconcile him to you to him. It is for that. But it is also because it says that he has set aside good works for you. So he has set aside good works for you. That is the process of sanctification. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people have gone so overboard with this, as I said at the beginning of this, they've gone so overboard with it that they have basically thrown the baby out with the bathwater. They have turned the word works into a dirty word so that you can't do any works. And anyone who does do works for the kingdom of God 
is now seen as trying to earn their salvation. No, if you're saved, you're not trying to earn your salvation. All you're doing is doing what your father wants you to do. Jesus said this, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven, does the will of my father. That's works, folks. That's works. Now, there's two things that God expects you to do in terms of works. Number one is to remain unspotted from the world. Good and perfect religion before God the Father is this, to visit widows and orphans in their time of trouble and remain unspotted from the world. That's the two types of works God wants you to do. He wants you to do good things for God and for others. Okay, that's what he wants you to do. And he will tell you those things through the scriptures and through the Holy Spirit to your heart. He will have you feeding homeless. He will have you uh, helping people whose maybe their house burned down and you're gonna welcome them into your home. Uh, maybe you're gonna be an hospitable person or you're going to you're gonna do good things for people. You're gonna pray for people. You're gonna pray for healing. You're gonna lay hands on the sick. You're gonna do good things for people, loving your neighbor as you love yourself. And you're also going to remain holy. These are the two types of works that God wants you to do. The good and perfect religion before God the Father is this, to visit widows and orphans in their time of trouble and remain unspotted from the world. So he wants you to remain unspotted and be holy. That means live a righteous and holy life. That is a good works. Jesus said you'll know a tree by its fruit. So the fruit that you need to produce in your life is those two types of fruit, doing good for others, which includes preaching the gospel. It includes witnessing for Christ, telling the unsaved they need to get saved, warning the unruly, preaching to the lost, doing the things that God has called you to do outside of yourself and, and, and basically do things for uh, others to bring them into reconciliation with God as well. And then also to do good works, good deeds for people and, and you know, feed the hungry, as I said, or give shelter to the homeless, uh, give clothing to people that don't have clothing, all kinds of things that you can do, charitable works, and, uh, and to remain unspotted from the world and be holy yourself. One is to be holy yourself and the other one is to call others to holiness through Christ. So we don't wanna throw all works out. Works is not a dirty word. It is not a dirty word in the Christian community. It should not be. It never has been in the eyes of God. And we need to be doing good works, not to be saved, but because we are saved. With, just as I read earlier, we have these works set aside by God for us that we should walk in them. And we should be doing good work. So the next time somebody gets mad like they did, now I want to clarify something. The scripture that fake Christians hate the most, James 2.26, that doesn't mean that if you don't like that scripture, you're a fake Christian. It's just that fake Christians don't like that scripture. Every fake Christian I've ever met doesn't like that scripture because they just want to this easy believism thing today that's going around, which is another heresy. Um, they, just, they just think that you just need to believe. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to repent. You don't have to do works befitting repentance. You don't have to do any of those things. All you gotta do is believe. And that's part of this garbage about throwing works out the window. If you are a person that believes you should not be doing good works, then you know what, congratulations, you've been deceived by the devil and the devil's made you ineffective. He's just taking you off the battlefield. You've just put down your sword, taken off the full armor of God and just walked off the battlefield. See, the devil doesn't necessarily have to fight most Christians. He's got most of them talked into not even showing up for the fight and because most Christians are not. So I wanted to clarify that tonight as far as works go. There are works of the flesh and works of the spirit. When you're not saved 
and you're doing the works of the devil, these are the works of the flesh and the works of your father, if you're, the devil is your father, the works of your father you want to do, but if you're saved and you're a child of God, then the works of your heavenly father you're gonna wanna do. And if you're not doing them, I'm gonna question your faith because the Bible says very clearly that faith without works is dead. And if you're not doing works for God, your faith is dead and grace is not, is not obtainable for you. So I'm gonna question your faith if you're not doing works for God. If you're just sitting around doing nothing, living in the world, doing your own thing, I'm gonna question your faith because God's word questions your faith. So God bless you all. I hope you learned something from this tonight. Uh, until next time, I'll see you later. God bless.